They weren't just images. They were revelations. When the James Webb Space Telescope opened its golden eye to the cosmos, humanity anticipated breathtaking clarity, intricate details, and an unprecedented window into the past. But what it delivered went beyond beauty. What it offered was contradiction, mystery, and the quiet unraveling of everything we thought we understood about the birth of our universe. The telescope began seeing farther than anything before it, not just through distance but through time itself. It peered into the universe's infancy, into the light from stars and galaxies born just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. And in those earliest echoes of creation, it found something astonishing, galaxies. Not in their primitive, chaotic forms as expected, but massive, mature, and well-organized. These galaxies weren't the cosmic seedlings scientists had long theorized about. They were fully developed structures, shining with complex order, at a time when the universe should have been too young to even allow such organization to exist. Among the most shocking was CEERS 93316, a galaxy whose redshift places it around just 250 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. It was too big. Too complete. Too soon. It was like finding a fully grown tree blooming in the ashes of a still burning wildfire. The laws of cosmic evolution dictated that such galaxies shouldn't exist yet. And yet, there they were, evidence that our timeline of the universe's history might be fundamentally flawed. This wasn't a case of being a little early. This was like showing up to a theater performance and discovering that the final act had already played before the curtains even rose. This wasn't an isolated case. The James Webb Telescope kept finding more galaxies like it. Massive. Well-structured. Some with star formation rates so high they rivaled modern galaxies, despite being born in an era when the cosmos was supposed to still be reeling from the heat and chaos of its origin. The speed of this development was staggering. These systems appeared as if the universe had fast-forwarded through its early stages, skipping the long, slow process of formation. Or maybe the process itself had been completely misunderstood. Then came the even stranger discoveries, hyperstructures. Webb began detecting vast cosmic filaments, massive intergalactic formations stretching across mind-numbing distances. These structures, appearing so early in cosmic history, should have taken billions upon billions of years to form. According to our current understanding, they should not exist in the early universe. The physics don't add up. The cosmic clock doesn't run fast enough to permit their creation. Astronomers like Dr. Garth Illingworth voiced their concern, saying things like, we're seeing systems that need twice the age of the universe to form. That statement alone should send chills down anyone's spine. Twice the age of the universe. That's not a margin of error. That's a collapse of the framework we've trusted for decades. It presents a reality where either our understanding of the fundamental forces of nature is deeply flawed, or something is guiding cosmic evolution in a way we do not yet comprehend. Dark matter, the invisible glue believed to hold galaxies together, also began to unravel under Webb's gaze. For decades, scientists relied on dark matter to explain the gravitational behavior of galaxies, why stars on the outskirts didn't simply spin off into space. It was a comforting placeholder. But as Webb analyzed early galaxies, it became clear that some were holding together just fine, without the gravitational influence we'd expect from dark matter. Its fingerprints were absent. If dark matter isn't there, yet these galaxies exist and function, then either dark matter is not what we believed, or it never existed in the first place. A deeper possibility is emerging. Gravity itself may not be constant. It might behave differently across time, or space, or both. And what if that's just the beginning? The chemical fingerprints in some early galaxies are raising further questions. Scientists expected simple elements like hydrogen and helium. Instead, they're seeing heavier elements, carbon, oxygen, and even indications of metallicity. These elements typically require generations of stars to be formed and then to die in supernova explosions. But those generations shouldn't have happened yet. The clock is wrong. Time is out of sync. The universe is acting as if it has lived much longer than we thought. 
It's like opening a baby's crib and finding a philosopher sitting there, already pondering the meaning of existence. Is the Big Bang model incomplete? Or worse, is it incorrect? There are those in the scientific community who are beginning to consider alternative explanations. Some are revisiting tired but persistent theories like modified Newtonian dynamics. Others are whispering about radical shifts. A universe that folds back on itself. A multiverse in collision with our own. Or a reality where time doesn't flow linearly but instead recursively, as if the universe reboots and replays itself in endless cycles. But beyond the science, something more chilling emerges. The Webb telescope isn't just showing us what's out there. It's showing us what may have been kept hidden, until now. For millennia, humanity looked to the stars with myths and metaphors. Now we look with mathematics and machinery. But the mystery has deepened, not diminished. Webb's revelations have made the universe feel less mechanical and more deliberate, as though the cosmos is not a machine, but a message. One speculative theory, born not from astronomy but from computational theory, has resurfaced with new energy. The simulation hypothesis. If the universe is a simulation, an extraordinarily sophisticated one, then the anomalies James Webb is revealing might not be errors in our understanding. They might be artifacts. Markers of a system not built by randomness, but by code. Perhaps the early galaxies appear complete because they were never meant to be watched. Perhaps we were never meant to peer this far into the past. Perhaps, in looking backward, we are breaking the illusion. A few physicists have gone further. One proposed that the universe may not only be a simulation, but that it is recursive intelligence, a living system that evolves through iteration. The stars, the galaxies, even life itself, are part of a cosmic feedback loop, one that continuously simulates and regenerates itself. And through our technology, like the Webb telescope, we are becoming participants in that loop. Instruments of self-awareness for the universe. This isn't just theoretical poetry. This is beginning to feel like observational truth. James Webb was supposed to answer questions. Instead, it's opened new ones, deeper, more existential, more unsettling. Are we witnessing the structure of the universe, or the structure of something else? A script? A machine? A dream? The telescope showed us the dawn of time, and in doing so, it may have revealed that time itself is not what we think it is. The scientists aren't sleeping well. The headlines report discovery after discovery, but the truth behind those headlines is confusion. Equations don't balance. Simulations collapse. The universe, it turns out, is stranger than we imagined, perhaps stranger than we can imagine. And so, we find ourselves standing at the edge of cosmic understanding, staring into a past that looks more like the future, into galaxies that shouldn't exist, structures that shouldn't stand, and laws that no longer hold. Maybe the universe didn't change. Maybe we just finally built a machine that lets us see it as it truly is. Not a universe of answers. But a universe of questions. And it's only just begun.